So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. Today's Thanksgiving. I got a lot on my plate today, but other than ham and turkey, the first thing I got to deal with is this slab pile. It's time to burn it up, guys. And for you bowl turners out there, people that say that I waste lots of good wood, you may want to close your eyes. All right, guys, most of the slabs have burned down. Right now we're working on these old logs. Most of this is pine that had a ring shake in it. One of them had a really bad uh, spot in the middle. I couldn't really do much with it. I do have some maple in there also that I let lay on the ground a little too long, get rotted away as well. That happens at a sawmill. So we're gonna go do some other stuff and keep an eye on this. I may add some more stuff to it later. Now we're gonna head on down to the kiln and start loading it up with some of that pine we've been sawing for the past week. I need to make some more shiplap. And here any minute now, dinner will be ready. You guys hang in there. Hope everybody's having a good Thanksgiving. All right, I went ahead and opened up the kiln, got everything ready to go. It's nice and empty, that's nice. Got my first layer of stickers right there on the bottom. If you're drying your wood, friends, make sure you space out your stickers every 16 inches. That's the best way, I believe, of getting good flat lumber. This behemoth of a kiln you're looking at is the L200 Pro Kiln Chamber. I love this kiln, friends. It does a really good job. This kiln will dry about 2,000 board feet of pine if it's green. If it's air dried, you can do 4,000. And if you put something like red oak in here, you can do 4,000 feet at a time. It really depends on if you're doing it green or doing it air dried. I air dry almost everything here it's set for pine and cedar and it goes straight into the kiln. All right, friends, it looks like Thanksgiving dinner's on the table. Let's go eat some good food and come back down here and stack up some more pine. I got this done, but there's another stack on the 754. No, I'm sorry, the 574. So after dinner, we'll get the tractor and bring it down here and do some more stacking. Guys, we're in the 754 now. Let's see if we can grab this pine log and take it up to the mill. It's an eight footer. The diameter looks like it's around maybe 26, 27 inches. That is a mouthful right there for the grapple. There we go. No problem. Looks like I've already got one pine in front of the mill. I forgot about that one. Let's see if we can put this one right in front of it. There we go.
Got about 300 board feet in the kiln. I'd like to have at least a thousand before we cut it on. This is another white pine, but I think it's a 10 footer. Can't remember to be honest with you. Yeah, 10 feet. So what I'll probably do is once I cut this down to size, I'll get the chainsaw and take off two feet. And the reason being, you don't want to put longer stuff halfway up in your rows in the kiln because that wood's unsupported. It would just warp on the ends and you have to cut it off later. It's not a good idea. You always want your lumber to be the same length or close to it within a few inches. 24 inches is way too much. On the sawmill, we've got a Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. I've had that blade on there for a couple of days. So after this log is finished, before we start on that big guy, I'll probably do a blade change. And if you're interested in those blades, give Joe a call. His cell phone number is down in the video description. People still ask me where I get my blades from after all these videos. They still ask me. All right, guys, let's open this one up and see how it looks. I don't see any large knots or any major defects or nothing like that. Should be a pretty good log. We're sawing this so inch and eighth on the thickness and six inch wide boards. What are we looking at down here? About 15 inches. So we'll probably have two six inch camps and maybe a few jacket boards as well. Not a bad log. That big one over there we just brought up, it is bigger than I thought it was. That is a good sized pine right there. It's got some large knots on it, but that is a big log. There will be a lot of lumber in that one. You guys hang in there.
right guys, we're in the 754. Let's head down here to the log yard, get some pine. Another reason I need to get some pine up here is to make room because I got some oak and some poplar coming in in a few days. And I know, before you guys say anything, I need a haircut. I know, I've been saying that for a few days now. I think it's Tuesdays when my appointment is. So I got a barber, and he does something I wish all barbers would do. He's got an app you put on your phone, and you make your appointment by doing that. That saves so much time. I don't know how many hours of my life I have wasted by going to the barber shop and sitting in a chair and waiting for my turn. So for you barbers out there, do what he does. Get that little Ring My Barber app and uh, save people's time because he's making a killing doing it. He stays booked up every week. It takes about a week or two to get in with him. But it's worth the wait because I don't have to wait. That's a good way to put it, I guess. You can grab this little one right here. It looks like an eight footer. Man, that grapple, I tell you what, guys, for handling logs, that grapple is hard to beat. I'll take this up to the mill. I'll be right back. Let's go ahead and grab this 10-footer. Take it on up to the mill. Then we'll get to saw. I think that's a 10-footer. What do you guys think? Definitely not an eight footer.
So before we start on those other two pine logs, I have two things to do. Number one, get the tracker and go bring up the trash can. Most importantly, number two, is get some coffee. It's been about two hours since I've had my last cup. That's been way too long. It's that time of the year. Looks like we got some Amazon packages on the front steps. I can't remember what I ordered though. But also, somebody asked me the other day down in the comments what I thought about this tracker. This is a 800 model tracker, I believe. I bought this at Bass Pro Shop about a year and a half ago. I'm not gonna do a full review video on this tracker, but I will say this, I like it pretty good. I have no complaints. Might as well check the mail while we're down here. What are you guys doing in there? Get out of there. there but I gotta have my coffee I tell you what I drink coffee all day long can't be with that this is an eight foot white pine it came from a tree service it's not too bad we got some knot clusters here ever probably 20 or so inches two inch knots I've seen a lot worse not too bad diameter down here on the operator's side we're looking at 17 inches down here on the other side the diameter is 17 inches, so not too bad. A nice straight log, that's what you want. No bow, no taper. The only large defect, and it's not really a defect in pine most of the time, are these knots right here, so not too bad. We're gonna be sawing these into one by sixes for shiplap in the barn. I'll be cutting this actually at an inch and an eighth on the thickness. Now somebody asked me about my sawmill, if it factors in the curve, yes it does. It factors in the curve of the blade which is the amount of material that your blade removes when you're cutting a board. So if you don't understand that, if it doesn't make sense to you, think about a circle sawmill. When it makes a cut, it removes a quarter of an inch of material just to make a cut. This band sawmill that I'm running, a Super 70 Wood Miser, it removes an eighth of an inch, and that's based on the thickness of your blade. I'm running an 055 thickness on this blade. So when you take into account the thickness of the blade and the set of the teeth on the blade, that's where you get the kerf of your blade. Now on the sawmill, as always, a Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. If you want those blades, friends, give him a phone call. His cell phone number is down in the video description. I can't brag on these blades enough, guys. I tell you, I really like them. Really good blades. I guess you guys can probably tell as much as I talk about them, but people keep asking me. I get emails all the time. Nathan, what kind of blades are you running on your sawmill? I'll say it in every video. So we'll open this one up, guys, and hopefully it'll be a nice log. And also, for lubrication on the sawmill, I'm running windshield washer fluid with a little bit of that cotton gin oil mixed in with it. It works pretty good. It's not as good as diesel, but until diesel prices go down, that's what I'm probably gonna be using for who knows how long, maybe forever, I don't know. Right now in Tennessee, in Northeast Tennessee, diesel is going for about $4.90 a gallon at the gas station. The off-road diesel is still around 440. What are you guys paying where you're at? I'd be interested to know. Oh yeah, two more things here. Two more things, we'll get going, sorry. Well, thank you everybody on Patreon for supporting me here in the channel, I really appreciate it. And in case you haven't noticed, I'm wearing my out of the woods zip up hoodie today. A little shameless promotion here, but if I don't promote myself, nobody else will. If you guys wanna pick this up, it's at farmfocus.com. There's a link down below to that also. It's getting cold and uh, it makes for a pretty good jacket. Me and my wife and Bruno, we all got one.
So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. Today I'm gonna to show you guys something I have to do here at the sawmill that I don't really enjoy, but it's a necessary evil when you run a sawmill. And I was actually contemplating whether or not I was gonna show this part of my day, but I try to keep it real here on the channel. So let me show you guys what we're working on. For those of you that have ever visited a real sawmill, this happens all the time. You get logs piled up everywhere, you lose track of them, Sometimes you don't get to them in time and they rot away like his poplar and pine has done. I have no excuse for this. It's just the nature of the business, guys. If you go to any kind of sawmill in this world, you will find a pile of logs that they never got to that will either be turned into firewood, pulpwood, or just burned on site. And that's what we're doing here today. So this is 90% pine. There's two poplars on top. I remember this one right here. It's got a pretty big hole in the middle. Probably wouldn't have sawed that one anyways, but this pine back here, nobody in my area will burn this for firewood. And it's been on the ground, guys, like I said, way too long. It needs to go. I need this room back. I also need to dig out my log right tools. I sure hope they're not watching right now. I kind of neglected those for the past season and parked them back here in the back and I'm gonna pay for it when I try to dig them out because those thorns are sharp. Check that out. And they are all around both those arches. That's not gonna be fun right there. All right, so for those of you that this bothers, think about it this way. Most of the logs that I get here at the sawmill, probably 95% of them come from tree services. If I don't take those logs, they go straight to the landfill. And they are used at the landfill. They do serve a purpose. They grind them into mulch, and somehow that aids them in getting rid of the trash when they bury it in the ground. I'm not sure how that works, but that's what I've been told. So if you think about it that way, these logs right here, if I wouldn't have took them, they'd have been in the landfill about four years ago. So at least I did give them a little bit of a chance by taking them on. But like I was saying earlier, you can't get to all of them. So these logs on the top need bucked down in half because they're too long for the burn pile. And over here, I did find some decent usable logs. I had two white oak that I have no idea where they came from, but we'll definitely get something out of those. Cause that's one thing about white oak, you can leave it laying on the ground for two, three, four or five years sometimes and still get some usable lumber out of it. You may find some buds in it, but you'll still get a few boards. All right, guys, I've got my tools ready. That's my 461. That's my favorite chainsaw. I've had that thing for about seven years now. A really good saw. Got the 754 with the grapple ready to pick up these logs. I got the sunroof open because it's really warm here today in Northeast Tennessee for late November. chainsaw just ate right through it. That is some rotten wood right there, guys. Can't even get a grip on this bark. It wants to fall right off. I'm rolling these off because the grapple on the tractor seems to pick up a log better. It gets a better purchase if there's no logs right beside it. Kind of hard to see it sometimes from that cab. Well, looks like we've uncovered somebody's home. 
Don't get me wrong, friends. I'm no expert when it comes to nature. Although, I have watched a lot of animal shows on the National Geographic Channel. I think I know what made this hole over here. So right there's the hole. It's about six inches in diameter. And if I was a betting man, I would say probably a groundhog. What do you guys think? Give me a comment down below. I'm thinking a groundhog, but I could be wrong. Let's go get the tractor and take these to the burn pile. Man, it stinks up here. These logs actually kind of smell pretty bad, actually. Nasty stuff. All right, guys, for those of you who are really, really bothered by this, take a look at that poplar log right there. There's no way you can get anything out of that. Look at the sweep in it. There's nothing there. All right, let's grab this poplar and take it to its final resting place. Can you believe I missed it? My goodness. I got it that time. Let's see if I can rip this fence post out of the ground with the grapple. If this doesn't work, I'll edit this out. A little disclaimer, this fence post is already pretty loose in the ground. No problem for the big guy, look at there. Well, now it's stuck. There it goes. Watch out, guys. Well, I tell you what. That about nailed you guys right in the face. That was close. <laughs> I didn't I didn't plan ahead right there on the camera. My goodness. Let's go get some logs, guys. Disaster has been avoided. These cameras are very expensive. about 10 logs taken down got some more cut up and ready to go but before we take those down let's bring the 574 up here and clean up some of this mess put that flail mower to work
about the city lights and the crazy nights Figure I should probably give it a try Maybe check it out, see what it's all about But the traffic is fast and the mud was slow The people I met you never get to know I kinda miss this place I used to live back home Cause up here it's breaking Thank you.